Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for taking a little of time out of your day to watch the video. Always much appreciated here. And burning the midnight oil again. Um, it's uh, getting ready for bed here. I got to get up at uh, 3.30 in the morning and drive to Grand Lake here from Springfield, Missouri for the first day of the Bassmaster Open uh, down there at Grand. So going to get a quick video to, to have you guys something to uh, watch when you wake up this morning. And today what we're going to talk about is the uh, underspin and some of the secrets I've learned about it, how to fish it, how to rig it, and that type of stuff. So, hey, real quick before we get started, just wanted to remind you guys, if anybody's interested in booking an on-the-water lesson with me, just shoot me a private message on my Instagram page, Block It Randy, uh, and I'll give you all the info on that. Again, I'm trying to get my Facebook account from being non-hacked. As soon as I get that, we'll start communicating with that, but you can shoot me a message on my Instagram page. And also, if you guys are interested in becoming members, um, and want to go a little bit farther in helping this channel out, just go to my homepage on my YouTube channel, uh, click on the About section, then click on Intuitive Memberships, and it gives you all the information on that, um, extra videos that aren't seen by the public each week, and uh, uh, access to my personal email address for your own fishing questions. <coughs> Excuse me, and <coughs> again, it's just a great way to support the channel if you like what I'm doing here. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the underspins here. Um, the reason I wanted to do this video right now is this is about the time of year when underspins start coming into play, um, where I've had my best success on them. It's normally once you start getting towards the end of October and on into, you know, pretty much through the end of March, to me, that's the prime time of the year to fish underspins. You can catch fish on them in the summertime, um, at times too. But the colder weather months in the early winter through late winter and early to mid pre-spawn is the time that I feel personally that really shines. So first of all, let's talk a little about the setup and the rig on here. <coughs> Excuse me. So these allergies are still killing me. <coughs> what I got here is um, I like prefer a 3 8 ounce underspin here um, with like a number. Uh, this is about, you know, possibly a number one or two willow leaf on there. Um, Size is dependent upon how deep you're fishing. Most of the time around here, I'm fishing this over, uh, you know, sustained or suspended tree, or excuse me, standing timber, you know, a submerged timber that is out deeper off points. And the three eight size allows me to get down really into that 10 to 25 foot zone where I catch a lot of the fish here. So you can use a lot of different trailers on them. Um, one of my favorite is this uh, Zoom Swimmer here. Uh, there's about any type of a swim bait works on it. I prefer some type of a, uh, you know, anywhere between a two and a half to three inch, three and a half inch paddle tail like this. So I'm going to rig it on, uh, you know, same way. And again, guys, when anytime you're rigging these uh, swim baits like this, it's so critical. I can't stress enough how critical it is to get the thing perfectly straight. So when you're doing this, really take the time to get this thing perfectly lined up. Because if it, if you don't get it perfectly lined up, the thing's gonna run off to the side a little bit, especially if you, if you speed it up. So the way that you can prevent that is to just really take the time and get it on there just perfectly straight. That's what we're gonna do here. So I got that. You can see just how, how perfectly straight that is right there, perfectly in line. So this is the setup here. You know, it's a perfect little shad resembling thing like this. Color variations depend. Um, I like some type of a wider, brighter color like this um, on dark days or windy days, or if the water visibility is sort of in that, under that four foot range. <clears throat> and if it's greater than four foot, or if it's on um, a little bit brighter days um, with not much wind, <clears throat> that's the time I'll go with more of a uh, translucent shad type pattern, more of a see-through, uh, silver shad, you know, sometime like that. But this is the one that I prefer. I prefer sort of this uh, widest pearl looking like this. This draws a strike from a long way away in that deep water. And if I can get by with it, I really like to use the three and a half inch size. I feel like I can get a bigger bite with the three and a half inch size. So what you're looking for on this guys is you want to fish it on, for me, there's really three different scenarios that it works the best. Uh, again, once that water temperature starts dropping down into the 60s, Main lake and secondary points are always good. Out off the point ends, point ends and sides, uh, getting out there and anywhere between 15 to 30 foot of water and just fan casting off the point end of the sides. And 
experimentation with your casting as far as casting it down. If you have a live scope or side imaging, uh, pay attention to where you're seeing a lot of the fish activity or bait fish activity and, and start targeting that particular water column. If it's windy out or under low light conditions, a lot of times I like to throw it up shallow. If it's as shallow as five feet deep on those points, especially if you have a lot of wind and just reel it, you know, three or four feet under the surface. But basically fan casting around the point until you figure out the depth of the fish. The second place I like to fish this thing is on bluff banks <clears throat> on lakes that have submerged timber. You know, a lot of the lakes out there um, on your bluff banks, you're going to have some deeper suspended timber or deeper submerged timber. And uh, basically what I like to do is I'll graph along those bluffs and I'll find where I feel um, and see most of the tops of the submerged timber. And I'll try to parallel those bluffs at that depth that I see those trees. Now, for example, like on Table Rock here, a lot of the tree tops are gonna be in 25 to 40 foot of water. So I'll basically parallel those bluffs, get my boat like in 50 to 70 feet of water, make long casts in front of the boat, count it down to that 20 to 30 foot range and, and try to reel it through the tops of those trees on those bluffs. The third place I like to fish it is if you're fishing ditches or coves in the backs of creeks and coves. Now, it could be a ditch like on Lake Hartwell. Um, it could be, you know, ditches, whatever you have. When you're talking about a ditch, you're basically just talking about the middle of a cove, normally anywhere between halfway to two thirds of the way back in the cove. So what I like to do in this situation, especially in the winter time, like November through February, is I get in the middle of those coves when that water starts to get like 40 to 60 foot deep, cast right down the middle of the coves and count it down again, you know, just experimentation to where I'm seeing most of the, the activity of the bait or the fish or whatever, or the tops of the trees. So the depth on it, it can be a lot of different things. It could be anywhere between five to 40 foot deep. So, but anyway, those fish, in the winter time will suspend in those ditches and those guts in the middles of those creeks in the middle of those coves and most any lake that you have out there where you have water visibility over four feet so anyway guys give it a try it's one sort of a bait that doesn't get fished a whole lot it's sort of a regional thing a lot of guys fish it back in the southeast or on clear water lakes just the underspin with a swim bait on it a zoom swimmer um, just a, a deadly thing and if you guys are interested in this, I'll include the Baitworks link in the, in the description here. You can order them through Baitworks online or get them at the store in Springfield. Um, if you order them online through the link that I provided, um, it's a good way to help the channel out also. So again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. And if you guys watch the video tonight, I'll give you guys a report on how the first day at Grand Lake went today. And I uh, hope you guys uh, uh, maybe get a little bit out of it. So we'll talk to you later. See you.